In this video, we're going to be testing the cheapest wireless HDMI system that I could find against the cheapest one I usually recommend to people, which is over four times more expensive. Can you really get good, reliable wireless HDMI under $100? Have I been wasting my money this whole time and could I just have saved by buying the cheapest thing? I'm going to find out and most importantly, it's got dragons on it. All right, so what are we doing in this video? Well, there's gonna be two products and we're gonna test them against each other. The first is the Shimbol TP Mini wireless system that costs just $89 and purports to give you just really good wireless HDMI, so we're gonna test that. And then we're gonna compare it to a wireless system that I've owned and operated for the last three years that I trust for a budget wireless system, and that's the Hollyland Mars 300 Pro Kit. So what we're gonna do today to test these systems is I'm gonna hook them up to the camera and the Ninja V, and then I'm going to record the signal from the camera, and I'm gonna record the signal into the Ninja V as it goes through wireless HDMI as I walk hundreds of feet in that direction. And we're gonna see how the signal holds up progressively over 100 feet increments. So I'm gonna do that with the Hollyland, kind of as a baseline for good quality budget wireless HDMI. And then I'm gonna do it with the Shimbol TP Mini to see if I could have saved hundreds of dollars to get essentially the same thing. I don't know, we're gonna find out. First, let's talk about what each of these products says it's going to provide to you. So for about $400, the Hollyland Mars 300 Pro Kit says it's going to give you a clear wireless HDMI signal for 400 feet of direct line of sight. And that's what we're gonna be doing right here is just direct line of sight. And it says it will provide that with less than 100 milliseconds of latency, which is enough to give you a clear signal that won't confuse you, but it's not really enough to pull focus from, but it's, it's good enough for like a video village or for just wireless monitoring. It's, it's been good to me over the last few years. And then there's the Shimbol, the TP Mini Wireless, which says it's going to provide for $89 600 feet of wireless HDMI clear signal with direct line of sight. Now that's 200 feet more than this more expensive Hollyland system. And even more, it says it's going to provide you that at 70 milliseconds of latency. So just better across the board for more than four times less money. If that's actually the case, then I'm gonna recommend this thing in spades because these aren't cheap. About $400 for the Hollyland system, and again, $89. Like, if this works, that's a pretty good deal. This TP Mini is far and away the cheapest wireless HDMI that I've seen and gets sold on sites like B&H. You can find this on B&H for just $89. So hopefully it turns out, because then if it does, that would be a pretty good deal. But before we get to our test, let's just talk quickly about the construction of both of the units. So both the Shimbol and the Hollyland system come with a unibody built-in antenna construction. So instead of having antennas just shooting off the top of these, the antennas are actually built into these devices and then sealed in a solid plastic case. So they're similar in that way. Both of these units, the Hollyland and the Shimbol, use a five gigahertz frequency to transmit their HDMI. So that's very much industry standard for these types of transmitters. Both of these systems can transmit 1080p at 60p or 60 FPS, which is gonna be the best signal you're gonna get. You can bump it down for better clarity, but if you're looking to transmit the best quality signal, that's what you're gonna get from both of these units. Both the Hollyland system and the Shimbol system can run off MPF style batteries and off of USB-C. And finally, they both have roughly the same interfaces. So the receiver on both of the units has two HDMI outs for two monitors. The transmitters both have an HDMI in from your camera or your source device. And then they have an HDMI loop if you needed to loop it out to another device. So they're very similar in that way. They both have interfaces for you to navigate the channel settings and just the details of the devices. Now, Hollyland has gone a little more expensive, rightfully so, because they are, and they have a little OLED screen that tells you what channel you're on and how to pair. And then they have this fun little rocker device. It's just a little rocker switch that helps you go up and down through the menu. It's very intuitive. I love Hollyland's system in this one. The Shimbol uh, TP Mini has gone in a different direction, obviously cost savings and budget friendliness. So instead of an OLED screen, their unit actually has just an array of LED lights that tells you kind of what you're doing within the menu system. And then they just have two buttons, which honestly don't feel that great. But uh, for $89, I mean, you can really knock it if it performs. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Now we talked about the similarities of the two units, but let's talk about the differences between the Hollyland system and the Shimbol system. So the Hollyland system has a fan on the inside of its devices to keep them cool and prevent overheating. The Shimbol, ironically in their marketing says that they don't have a fan and that's a good thing because it helps them operate silently. It's like a silent operation device. Now take that for what it is that, that this system and more expensive systems like Teradex systems have built in fans. 
This one doesn't, so I haven't seen it overheat, but hopefully that's not an issue for these devices. The next thing is that the Holyland system offers an entire ecosystem of app-based Wi-Fi transmission. So if you need extra devices, extra eyes on the signal, you can actually sync iPads and phones and stuff to your Holyland system via the app and then get a couple extra screens hooked into the signal if you wanted to share you know, for multiple devices. To my knowledge, um, the Shimble doesn't have any of that. It's just a, a wireless HDMI transmitter and that's it for the price. So you will be missing out on some features without the Holyland system in that regard. The Holyland system, just speaking generally, has more points on the body to mount it, both the transmitter and the receiver. So if you need some more interesting configurations, perhaps it would be better for you in that way. Finally, one last thing I wanna say is that the Holyland system is just built better. Like it objectively feels like it's, it's built better. It's a little heavier, but that's not a bad thing. It just feels more solid and it's not very heavy at all, honestly, but it just feels more solid. The Shimbol TP Mini Wireless, um, it doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel, uh, made in a subpar quality, but it does objectively feel lighter and more plasticky. There's less in it and the body and the way it's designed, I mean, there's there's gonna be people that like that kind of flair on their video devices, but in my opinion, it's not a professional design that I would want mirroring through the rest of my kit. So take it for, you know, your mileage may vary. But I will say the TP Mini obviously has, oof, give me, get, flip over. I mean, it has dragons. It has, it has dragons on it. When was the last time you bought a piece of video equipment that came with dragons on it? All right, so now that we have the specs and the promised performance out of the way, let's get into our test to see if, well, both of these units really perform how they advertise they will perform. So let's go. Okay, so here is our system. We have the Hololand Mars Pro on the, uh, the Ninja, and it is recording the camera feed, and I have the other end on the Sony FX3. So that's what we're gonna be recording. And we're just gonna we're just gonna walk away. So um, we're at our first stop. We've reached 100 feet in distance away from the uh, receiver, and uh, we're gonna see how the system performs. I'm just gonna kind of move the camera around, and we're gonna compare side by side to see if there's well, there will be latency, but just kind of how the signal's holding up, and um, well, if, you know, the signal's any good. Here's 200 feet away. Um, you can barely see the Ninja anymore, but um, still should have a strong signal out of the Holy Land. I'd expect nothing less. All right, we've made it to 300 feet, and I mean, I could barely see the Ninja, so <laughs> I mean, let's turn it around here. Way down there is the Ninja, but uh, should still be in the operating range for the Holy Land. So let's just take another little move here. Got a soccer net that we can use here as our, as our straight line test. A little more of the grass. Okay, so this is 400 feet. This is the theoretical max that the Holy Land wants to go that it guarantees you a good signal and the proper latency uh, it's very far away like you are essentially shooting from a parking lot over you're not even in the same building or anything like that like you are very far from your uh, receiver that being said we'll see how it performs And finally, we're gonna do one more. We're gonna go up to 500 feet just to see if the Holy Land system can keep up 100 feet past its theoretical rated maximum. Hey, look at that. 500 feet put me right in the middle of this soccer field. Okay, so the Atomos, just a speck in the distance now, 500 feet away. And this is what the signal looks like. Okay, so now we're gonna go back, uh, all the way 500 feet back, and we're gonna swap out the Hollyland system for the Shimbol system, the, the TP Mini Wireless, and we're gonna see if it'll perform just as well, better, as good, worse, than the Hollyland system. So let's figure that out. We're back, all right, let's swap the system out for the TP Mini. All right, so now we have the Shimbol TP Mini on the Atomos Ninja V, and we are getting signal. It automatically found the right channel and hooked up just as the Holy Land system does. Just looking at like the regular latency from the camera, I'm, I'm, it's not doing too bad. Like, oh, oh, oh. All 
We're back 100 feet away from our unit. And we'll do the same test as before, just kind of moving the camera around, see the latency, see how the transmission holds up. Hopefully well. All right, we're at 200 feet, and we've uh, essentially lost our Atomos already. But let's see how it performs. All right, now we're gonna move to 300 feet, which for a system that costs this much would be what I consider pushing it. But according to them, uh, TP Mini is, is good for 600 feet, so we're just halfway there. All right, we're back to the net at 300 feet away. And how's the signal holding up? All right, we're at 400 feet. We got our second net. Back in center court on our soccer field here. And that's because we are at 500 feet away from the Ninja. The transmitter should be transmitting 500 feet, low latency, good signal. And we'll see if that is actually true when I review all this footage afterwards. All right, now I didn't go to 600 feet with the Hollyland system because it's not rated for that, but I will go to 600 feet on the TP Mini because they claim that that's still in spec. So join me as we go from 500 feet to 600 feet on the wireless. All right, 600 feet. 600 feet takes us almost to the end of this junior soccer field. And um, this should be the maximum that this unit, this, uh, Shimble TP Mini Wireless is rated for. So we should be getting a decent signal. If I just move the camera around a little bit. Should be getting a decent signal, at least enough to show a client or you know communicate prospectively what the uh, what the signal is supposed to be showing. There should be no jitters or bit rate issues or artifacting or anything really. So I haven't seen the transmitter footage because I've been walking with the camera, but um, I hope, I hope the TP Mini works. Hey guys, Editor Josh here, and uh, it did not. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Shimbol TP Mini uh, was not the stellar wireless HDMI performer that I had thought it would be. Um, I mean, go back, you can look at the footage um, right at the start, like it started dropping signal, like lag spikes and, and heavy latency. Even, you know, 20, 30 feet away, like as soon as we get to that 100 there, still spikes. And of course it's usable, but um, close to the maximum distance, that 600, it just started dropping signal. Like it just really couldn't keep up. And honestly, um, even after 200 feet, it was like a bit dicey. So what do I have for a conclusion for you then? Well, first I want to commend Shimble for creating a product uh, that just is, is in a price class of its own, like taking wireless HDMI and driving the price down a ton. I, I like that. I, I have to commend them for coming in at such an aggressive price point, even if their product isn't necessarily for me. And um, you know, to an extent, I don't really think it should be for a lot of people, just because it uh, isn't really the performer that I expected it to be. It uh, it does struggle uh, a fair bit, and that is aside from some of the quirks of the product. I think maybe being a first gen product, and that's kind of what I'm getting uh, out of this system is that there's a, maybe just a couple bugs and a couple kinks that need to be ironed out before it is uh, the stellar value product that I think it has the potential to be uh, in the future if the company maybe releases a V2 or continues to work on it in some way. So uh, in conclusion, I would say that I don't recommend this product. I think um, there's a very narrow margin of people who it could potentially be useful for. Um, the only people who I would really recommend this product for uh, would be uh, one, uh, if you can't spring for the Hollyland system, if that if you need wireless HDMI and you can't afford the Hollyland system, um, so that's that's one thing. Uh, next, uh, if your camera doesn't already come with some sort of wireless or Bluetooth signal transmission, so for example, on the Sony cameras that we have here, um, you can use the Creator app to get a uh, wireless HDMI just to your phone or a tablet. That signal is going to be better than the signal coming out of this device. And I know Canon and Nikon have very similar systems. So if you do 
need like a phone screen or you just need to see the screen of your camera from somewhere else, that's gonna be a better version of that for you and it comes free with your camera, you just need an app. So for some reason, if you don't wanna use that, if you're trying to use a camera that doesn't have that or, or another signal device that doesn't have that, um, then I, again, you would, you would also need to not be able to afford the Holy Land, you would need that, and then you, you also need to be very close to it. So if you're also comfortable with using the system essentially in the same room with not a lot of movement, I found that this system did struggle with camera movement specifically. When it was a locked off shot and kind of the subjects were moving, like a little bird or you know the grass or something, fine. For at least for me, but when I was start, you saw when I was walking and shaking the camera, like it really did just drop off. So again, to reiterate, if you can't spring the budget for the Holy Land system, if you're not using a camera that doesn't have a built-in feature, and you're okay with working within maybe a 50 to 100 foot distance, then this system could make sense for you. But I think, honestly, you're never going to regret going with something a little upper end like the Holy Land system, at least for this, for this type of product class. I look forward to the day when you can get 100 or sub 100 wireless HDMI systems for video creators, uh, but unfortunately I don't think that day is today, so I would not recommend this system uh, for the vast majority of people. All right, so thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you very much for watching my comparison between the Holy Land Mars Pro 300 system and the Chimpole TP Mini Wireless. That's a mouthful every single time. Thank you very much, I appreciate you. The channel is gonna reach a milestone very soon, which is 2,500 subscribers. And I just wanna thank each and every one of you for sticking around and being a part of that 2,500. I appreciate you very much. Hopefully I'll be able to create some more awesome content coming through, some more reviews, some product related stuff, and some video creation content. We'll see, but I know if you keep sticking around, I'll keep making that content just so people can see it. So thank you very much uh, for coming along and watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.